Hey everybody, Mike here, and I've got a really fun video planned. I'm building three dining table and bench sets for a trendy restaurant out here called Kitchen in the Desert. And these are the 20 foot cedar two by sixes that I'm stealing from my buddy Ben Ueda. And these boards are provided by Real Cedar, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. Big thanks. The top boards have a little bit of weathering, so we'll put those to the side and we'll save them to cover up later. But check out how nice this grain is underneath. The client liked the idea of using cedar because these are gonna be outdoor tables and I was able to give a good price on the materials. And now I'm gonna cut these in half with my circular saw before we run them through the table saw to cut off the rounded edges and cut them to their final width, which is four and three quarters inch. The leg hardware for the benches have an inside opening of 15 inches wide. And that's why I need three more of these 20 foot two by sixes. That way I can cut six five inch wide pieces for one bench on each side. I cut the first edge just enough to remove the rounded corner. That way I'm gonna get a really nice seam. Then after they were all done, I moved the fence over to four and five eighths inch and cut the boards to their final width. Now I had a whole lot of boards, so big thanks Shane for the help. And after all of the boards were processed for the tables, we did the same for the benches. These boards will be cut to a final width of five inches and each bench uses three boards. And now that all 42 boards are ready to go, 24 for the table and 18 for our benches, I set up some saw horses with extensions and I laid out my boards, making sure to keep the pairs from our 20 foot originals. And I oriented the board so that they match from the outside in. I think it looks cool. And now I need to drill pocket holes, but I gotta install them on the bottom of the boards. And this is the Craig Jig XL. I'm using it for the first time. It's super heavy duty. In fact, look at how large the bit for this is compared to the standard Craig Jig. This is made for two x four and four x four projects. It says it's supposed to make joints that are twice as strong. That should be really awesome. After using it, the big upside in this tool is it puts the pocket hole closer to the center of the board in thicker material. If you think about it, a standard pocket hole is in the center of a three quarter board, whereas this is right in the middle of an inch and a half board, and that's gonna make a stronger joint. And this is a really cool setup if you have limited tools. I just have the jig, a clamp, and then all of the same drills that I normally do. And if you don't have a lot of clamps for big tables, this could be a great setup. And this isn't the fastest process in the world, but clamping and screwing each board really makes sure that even if you're not building on a perfectly flat surface, you're getting a really flat panel with all of your reference edges butting up 90 degrees. And really the screws are here for alignment and to hold everything in place while the glue dries. All in all, I did my best not to apply too much glue into my joints. You'll see that I got a little bit of squeeze out, but I didn't want to have to clean up a huge mess. Cedar is a relatively soft wood, so it's kind of hard to remove a lot of glue once it's dried. And that's why it's important to clean up any glue squeeze out that you do have with a wet rag or a chisel while it's still easy to get. And here we have our first 10 foot long table for the order. We just need two more. The wood that I was using had been sitting outside for a while, which was great. That means it's already acclimated to my environment, but it did have a lot of surface stains and weathering. So I started by sanding with 80 grit and I sanded up to 150. I squared up the ends of my table with a scrap piece of plywood that's a good straight edge and my circular saw. And now our tables are about nine and a half feet long. And pro tip, you wanna make sure you have a really nice finished blade with a high tooth count. And if you're still getting a little bit of chip out, you can use masking tape or painter's tape to prevent that. And sorry for the poor audio, but it is really convenient that my entire house is empty because I just got done pouring these concrete floors. This is really the only place that I've got enough space to keep these covered and clean while I apply finish. When I talked to the clients, they said that they wanted the most heavy duty finish for outdoors since these tables are gonna be outside. And so this is the finish that I suggested and I really like it because even though it's called clear, it does still have a little bit of pigment and really brings out a lot of life in cedar. Oh, I love this. I was scared because this has a little bit of pigment, but I love this color. I did use a big roller, but it's a quarter inch nap and I really didn't get any brush marks, which is nice because I was able to move pretty quick and this stain does dry fast. And in this shot, you can see just how pretty the panels we we're able to make, way better than boards with rounded corners butting up to each other. 
And I'm applying four coats total since these are going in a restaurant and I want them to stand up to heavy use. I made sure to let these dry overnight before I did anything and we will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Let's face it, if you do stuff, you need a website. People need to be able to search you, find you, and hire you. Whether you're a fitness instructor, own a restaurant, or maybe you build furniture. Wink, wink. And the good news is, Squarespace is your one-stop shop for a custom website, online store, or domain. And the best part is, is you need zero website building experience. If you can upload files and drag and drop text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace's designer templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where your customers find you. And they are packed with tons of great features like no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, the Squarespace Video Studio mobile app that allows you to create high level, professional content for your website and social media, and don't forget member areas, which allow you to package premium content behind a paywall, charging your members a monthly subscription fee. I can see this being great if you have online fitness, cooking courses, or woodworking plans. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link in the description that is squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store or domain through Squarespace. One more big thanks to Squarespace. Now let's get these tables finished. I'll be using these prefabricated powder coated legs from Semi-Exact. It's called a slat dining table or bench leg and the table top wedges right into the leg and screws in easily. I gave the client two different options, a chunky wooden base and this clean metal option, and they definitely preferred this. On the semi-exact website, I knew that it said that these would work for six or eight foot tables, something like that, but I knew I would be pushing it to the limit with these nine and a half foot long tabletops. Everything did feel sturdy so far, so I went ahead and installed some self-leveling feet I also went ahead and screwed in my bench legs as well. And if you're not already, make sure and follow me at Modern Builds on Instagram. So the benches look amazing, but as I suspected, they are gonna need a spine down the middle. That way, they don't flex. So what I'm gonna do is add a two by six on edge with glue and screws to the bottom of these bench tops. That way we can seat up to six people on each side. Oh, that's way better. While I was at it, I also cut a two by six in half and I attached one of those boards to each side of the bottom of the tabletop. And you'll notice that I always made sure that if the board had a curve, it was arching up in the middle like a rainbow. If it was the other way, the tension in that board would be trying to pull the center down instead of pushing it up, which is what we want to do. Oh, dang, that's super sturdy. That's great. Back and forth, it barely moves. That's awesome. Now I'll be honest, delivery is where I messed up this whole job. I really didn't factor it in the way that I should have, but I'm gonna talk about it later. I loaded up all of the tabletops without their bases, that way I could fit them in my truck, and then I drove out to Kitchen in the Desert, which is where these are gonna live. So if you ever wanna check these tables out, go there and you can see them. I mentioned it earlier, but cedar is a really lightweight wood, so unloading these was not as big of a deal as I thought it would have been. I never would be able to carry a panel of walnut that size. I took some high quality, tough built sawhorses with me on location, and then I installed my legs. And one more reminder, you can get these legs at semiexact.com. I used inch and a quarter long outdoor rated screws and you can see how this bar underneath adds a lot of support to the tabletop in the way that it's bent rather than just being a flat bar. Dirty, dude. The tables did need a little touching up here and there. Also, I needed to make sure and stain the spines on the tables and the benches. Then we moved some old stuff out of the way so we can make space for the first new table that's front and center in front of the outdoor stage. And we're done. 
The other two tables have their own section here in this side patio. I can see this functioning great for large groups or individual parties. Since the tables are so long, they fit a ton of people and you could have a couple of groups or three or four at each one. All in all, I'm very happy with the project and the client is very, very excited. So I couldn't be more happy with how everything came out. And like I said, Kitchen in the Desert is a really cool spot out here in Joshua Tree, 29 Palms area. So if you do get a chance to swing by, make sure and let me know and give me a tag on Instagram at Modern Builds. I mean, come on, how cool are these tables? And now let's talk money. Normally, I don't stress charging delivery for something small because I enjoy the process of seeing the customer be hype on what I make. But this was three tables and six benches, which was a lot of work to get down to 29 Palms where the restaurant is. Now, I probably already mentioned this at some point in the video, but I charged $8.50 plus the cost of materials for each set of table and benches. So that comes out to a total of... $25.50. Now I did have hired help for sanding, cutting, and assisting for two days, which cost me 500 bucks. And I initially thought that this would take two days of building and then a little bit of time to deliver. But it ultimately took four days to build everything. And I really don't want to factor delivery into this price. Ahead of time, I should have realized it was a half a day and budgeted and priced accordingly. All in all, that means I made a little over $500 per day for my woodworking labor. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's decent. Hey Siri, what would your salary be if you made $500 a day? Yo, that would be 130 grand a year. Now my job is content. That's why I was able to get a good deal on materials and pass some of that along to my client. But my goal was to have at least 850 as my day rate, but I'm still happy with 500. And if you are a woodworker doing client work or you are inspired to do client work, I'll leave a couple of links down in the description to some videos and articles that I've learned from about how to figure out a day rate, establish a good way of making a quote and helping buyers understand the value of design, not just labor. But that's it. Thanks for watching. It's getting dark. Make sure and like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye.